Welcome to iLecture Online, and just as promised in a previous um, video, here we have capacitors in parallel in series, but connected to a battery, and that means that this battery is going to push charges onto the capacitors. Some current will flow until all the capacitors are filled with charge, and the question then becomes, find the charge on each capacitor and find the potential difference across, or yeah, across each capacitor. Um, or on each capacitor. Actually, the better way to, to state that, let me correct that, would be to say, find the potential difference across each capacitor. That's the more uh, correct way of saying that, because typically when we measure the voltage or the potential difference, we take a uh, voltage uh, measurement device called a multimeter, and we actually measure the voltage across the terminals of a capacitor. So that's why we use the word across. OK, how do you do that? Where do you start? Well, you do the same thing like what we did before. For a moment, you ignore that the battery is there. You know it's there, but just ignore it. <clears throat> Excuse me. You're going to now find the equivalent capacitance in stages. So just like before, you're going to start by taking these two capacitors right here and turning those into a single capacitor. Of course, those two are in series. Since they're in series, you need to find the total capacitance by taking the product over the sum, and of course this is capacitor 3 and capacitor 4 divided by C3 plus C4. So we find that by taking the product over the sum. So in this case that's 40 times 40 divided by 40 <clears throat> plus 40. And as you will notice here, uh, the answer here is 1600 divided by 80, which is equal to um, 20. So it turns out when you have two capacitors, that are the same size in their series, the equivalent capacitors will be half that value, so 20 microfarads. So this whole circuit can now be replaced by the following circuit, which is this one here. We still have the original 10 microfarad capacitor. We now have our parallel circuit, but these two combined now will turn into a 20 microfarad capacitor. This one is also a 20 microfarad capacitor, and now we have this equivalent circuit. Plug in the values, we have 10 microfarads here. These two now will become a 20 microfarad capacitor, and this is still your 20 microfarad capacitor. So notice the only thing you've done is taken the top two here and turned into a single capacitor. We continue now by taking these two capacitors right here and turning them into a single capacitor. In this case, they're connected in parallel. Capacitors connected in parallel, you simply add them together. So C total equals C1, or well, whatever they are, so that was C3, 4 combined and C2, hmm. well, we'll just, uh, in general, so C1 uh, plus C2, uh, so this is equal to, well, that could confuse you, right? So let's call this C3, 4, that's the combination of 3, 4 together, added to C2, so that would be equal to 20 plus 20, which is 40 microfarads. So those two combined turn into a single capacitor of 40 microfarads. And if we then draw this over here, we still have our original 10 microfarad capacitor, and these two combined now will become a 40 microfarad capacitor. And that's our 10 microfarads. So we still have C1, right? This is still C1. It hasn't changed. C1. And this now becomes C1, uh, C2, C3, and C4 all combined. So we call this uh, C2, 3, and 4 all combined into a single equivalent capacitor. So now the next stage is to take those two and turn those into a single capacitor. And of course, since they're in uh, series, the total capacitance is equal to the product. That would be two, three, and four. There we go. Divided by the sum, C1 plus C2, three, and four, like that. So that would be 10 times 40 over 10 plus 40, which is 400, over 50, which is 8 microfarads. So this whole circuit could be replaced by a single 8 microfarad, which is considered the total or equivalent capacitance hooked up to our battery. Oop, too many lines here. Our battery, and our battery is, uh, has a potential difference of 20 volts. All right. So now what we've done is we've taken our circuit that we had before, hooked up to a 20-volt battery, 
found the equivalent capacitance in stages until this whole circuit right here could be replaced by a single 8 microfarad capacitor still hooked up to our 20 volt battery. All right, so that's what we had learned so far, but now can we go ahead and answer the questions, find the charge in each capacitor, and the potential difference across each capacitor. So, looking at this situation, we have a single capacitor now hooked up to a 20 volt battery. We can then say that the potential difference across this one, so we can say that C total, or the voltage across C total, <clears throat> So the voltage across C total is equal to 20 volts. The capacitance of C total, C total, is equal to 8 microfarads. So then how much charge is on C total? So charge total, how much is that equal to? So we have to go back to the equation that tells us the definition of capacitance. And that equation says that the capacitance is equal to the charge placed on the capacitor divided by the voltage that pushes us there. So if we want to solve this equation for Q, we can say that Q is equal to C times V. So to find the charge on this equivalent capacitor, we simply take the capacitance and multiply it times the volts that push the charge on there. So in this case, Q is equal to C times V, which is 8 microfarads times 20 volts. And that would be Q is equal to, and of course that would be Q total on the whole circuit, is equal to 160 microcoulombs. There. <clears throat> so we determined that if we take this entire circuit and replace it by a single equivalent capacitance, the charge in that single equivalent capacitance would be equal to 160 microcoulombs, which is the same as saying there would be 160 microcoulombs of charge placed on the circuit. All right, but now how do we find the individual charges on each capacitor like that? All right, for that we have to follow the, the following rule. If capacitors are connected in series, the charge on each is the same as the total charge on the equivalent capacitance. All right, that means that the charge on capacitor one has to be equal to the charge on the equivalent capacitor two, three, four, which means this is the equivalent capacitance by combining a capacitor two, three, and four together. And that has to equal the total capacitance that we found right here, which means that the 10 microfarad capacitor has 160 microcoulombs of charge on it, and the 40 microfarad capacitor has 160 microcoulombs of charge on it. And you might say, how then is that possible? If the total charge is 160 microcoulombs, shouldn't like each have maybe half or a portion of it so that it adds up to 160? And the answer is no. When they're connected in series, what that means is that whatever charges you place onto this particular capacitor plate, causes an equivalent amount of charge to be pushed away from the other side of the plate, which then runs down or flows down. I guess they don't run, charges don't run, they flow through the, through the conductor, and then they'll deposit these charges on this side, which then will push away the positive charge on the other side, making that negative. And you can see that it, it kind of, um, um, the charge just kind of goes from capacitor, 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 placing the same amount of charge in each capacitor in a series circuit which means that all these capacitors will have 160 microcoulomb of charge And on. we just looked at this and we realized I made a mistake and it's easy to do on a problem like this, this complex. I found that the total charge was 160 microcoulombs and what I have here, this should be the charge on one is equal to the charge on those, which is equal to the total charge. This should have said charge and not capacitance equal to a 160 microcoulomb. So just to make sure, I was talking about charge there and not about capacitance, so hopefully that might clear up just a little confusion that I might have created by that error. Which okay. means going back there to the go. original circuit, since C1 here is the same as this C1 there, this one here has a charge, Q1, equal to 160 microcoulombs. Yep, I said the right thing. And that means that this also has 160 microcoulombs of charge on it. All right, so then I go over here and say, how is that 160 microcoulomb of charge distributed across these two capacitors? Well, it turns out that 
Since the two capacitors are equal and they're parallel, in parallel capacitors, the charge is distributed across them according to their size. Since they're equal size, they will get the same amount of charge. If this one happened to be twice as big as this one, it would carry twice as much charge. So what we can say is that the charge on this one is equal to the total charge on the two of them times the, ch the capacitance of this one divided by the total capacitance. So what I can say here is, is that the charge on the second capacitor is equal to the charge on the sum of the two, so Q2 plus Q3, 3 comma 4. So that would be this capacitor is really the sum of those two, right? So the charge on Q2 would be the charge on both of those. <clears throat> Or, eh, that's really not the right way to say it. Let me, let me go back. The best way to explain that one is it takes the 160 microcoulombs, so that's equal to the charge on the three combined like that. That's a better way to say it. Multiplied times the size, oops, that's charge on those two, multiplied times the size of the second one divided by the size of the sum, C2 plus C3 comma 4. That's a better way to write it. So let me explain what I just did. To find the charge on this one here, you take the total charge of the distributed on those two, which I say is Q234, all right? You multiply it times the size of this capacitance, C2, and divide it by the sum of the capacitance like that. So put into practice, this is equal to 160 microcoulombs times the size of this capacitor right here that we want to find the charge on, 20 microfarads, divided by the sum of the two, which is 20 microfarads plus 20 microfarads, whoop, microfarads right there, and that is therefore equal to 80 microcoulombs. Just as I predicted, since the size of the capacitor is the same, they will each carry half the charge. That means this one gets 80 microcoulombs and that one gets 80 microcoulombs. So this one right here, we can say that Q2, is equal to 80 microcoulombs, and those two combined also carry 80 microcoulombs of charge. Now, for the last part, we know that this capacitor is really the equivalent of these two capacitors, and those two capacitors are in series. And just like before, when capacitors are in series, they each carry the total capacitance, which means if the two combined carry 80 microcoulombs of charge, that means each one of them must carry 80 microcoulombs of charge. So Q3 has to have 80 microcoulombs of charge, and Q4 must have 80 microcoulombs of charge. And that's how we determine the charge on each of the four capacitors. Now the next thing we need to do is also find the potential difference across each capacitor. So going back to the definition of capacitance, and where do I have that equation? Right here. <clears throat> I can then see that I can use that equation to find the voltage across each capacitor by changing this equation or solving it for V. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we'll take this here, and we'll say that the voltage across each capacitor is equal to the charge across each capacitor divided by capacitance. So applying that equation to all four capacitors, Voltage across the first capacitor is equal to the charge, Q1, divided by the size of capacitance 1. So that's equal to the charge, which is 160 microcoulombs, divided by 10 microfarads, and so that's equal to 16 volts. So this tells me that V1 has 16 volts across it. <clears throat> that makes sense then to say that if the total is 20 volts and this has 16 volts on it, that this branch right here will have 4 volts on it. Well, we can figure that out by calculating the voltage across C2. So V2 is equal to Q2 over C2, and Q2 is equal to 20 microcoulombs. Oh no, not 20, 80. 80 microcoulombs divided by C2 being 20 microfarads, and sure enough, that's equal to 4 volts. So, so just as I predicted, V2 is equal to 4 volts, uh, V1 was equal to 16 volts. All right, now, what about the voltage across these two capacitors? Now, if 
V2 across this one is 4 volts. It must be 4 volts across this one, which must be split between these two capacitors. And since they're equal in size, I would bet that they each have 2 volts across them. But again, making sure, we can say that V3 is equal by definition to Q3 divided by C3, and the charge on the third capacitor is equal to 80 microcoulombs. And the capacitance of the third capacitor is 40 microfarads, and sure enough, that's equal to 2 volts. So we can see that the voltage across the third capacitor, V3, is equal to 2 volts. And doing the same for Q4, V4 is equal to Q4 divided by C4, which is equal to Q4, which is equal to 80 microcoulombs. C4 is equal to 40 microfarads, and sure enough, this one also looks like it's carrying 2 volts, so we can say that V4 is also equal to 2 volts. And that makes a lot of sense because the 2 volts plus 2 volts across this branch must equal the 4 volts across this branch, and then 4 volts plus 16 volts should add up to 20 volts. So it looks like I have the right values. And that's how you solve a problem like this. So again, to recap, if you're given a parallel and series capacitor circuit attached to a voltage supply or a battery, you must first find the equivalent circuit till you can replace the whole circuit by a single capacitor. You then place the 20 volts across it to figure out the charge on that equivalent or total capacitance, and then you go back one drawing at a time and slowly distribute the charges across the capacitors, taking the rule that if they are in series, the charge on each is the same as the total. If they're in parallel, the charge is distributed appropriate to the size of their capacitors. Then you work away all the way backwards. Once you determine the charge on each of the capacitors, you then use this equation to find the voltage across each capacitor by simply taking the charge of each capacitor and dividing it by the size of the capacitance. And that's how you find the voltage across each capacitor. So I hope that this helps you figure out how to do a problem like that. So give it a try. See if you can do this one on your own. Good luck with that.